Time for step two, uh, part two of my series on big questions. So we're talking about what are those those questions that kind of burden people's hearts, that burden them, they lay in bed at night, and in the pit of their stomach, they're like, oh, I wonder if. And these kind of ultimate questions that have kind of consumed uh, humanity from the beginning. So last week we talked about, uh, can I trust the Bible? And next week we're going to be talking about, where do I go when I die? So these fundamental, ultimate questions. And if you know anything about me, or anything about Northern Light Church, you might think, well, I already know the answer to that question. Well, I'm going to go at it from a different angle than you would ever expect, because that's what I do. And so uh, please come and join us for that uh, as, as we unpack that question next week. And if you missed last week, you can go on our website, northernlight, northernlightchurch.us, or, uh, or go to our YouTube channel, and you can see it in the very near future. So, um, great. But today, we're going to talk about a different question. And that is, does prayer really work? One of the centers of prayer in the whole of the world is the Wailing Wall, which is one of the remaining walls of the old temple in Jerusalem. And uh, Jewish people will go there at great length and pray for hours on end. And they'll write down their prayers, and they'll actually put them in a crack in the wall. And uh, that's a way of showing God's continuing promise to his people. And there was a journalist who was, who was actually there doing a report in Jerusalem and noticed that there was uh, the same man he noticed every single day was there uh, from the time that he arrived at dawn. Uh, and if he went away and came back, he was still there until dusk. And he was there reporting for weeks on end and continued to notice the same man there faithfully every single day. And uh, finally, he was about to leave because his assignment was a short-term thing, and so he spoke with the. He he went out of his way to grab this man who had been praying so faithfully every day. And he said, "Do you really come here every single day?" And the man says, "Yes, yes, I do." He says, "How long have you been coming here?" "I've been coming here for 23 years, every single day, without fail." And, and what do you pray? What do you do? How do you how do you stay faithful for this long? The man says, "Well, in the morning." I prayed for healing throughout the world, that people would have enough food to eat, clean water to drink, that, uh, that justice would reign throughout the world. And then I take a break for lunch, and I have tea. I come back, and I pray that, uh, that, that wars would cease, that all humanity would see that they uh, are all brothers and sisters, and that we could move into a future where joy and tranquility reigns over all of us. And the reporter says, how does that make you feel? And the man says, it feels like I'm talking to a wall. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but sometimes that is how we encounter prayer. We think, I'm just throwing my words out there to the universe and hoping that they stick. And often we don't see the fruit of our labor on our knees. And so prayer becomes this category like, should I bother at all? Because it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything. You know, I've seen that meme on Facebook, maybe you have too, where it says, you know, don't pray for me, don't send me your good thoughts, send me a hot dish. Right? <laughs> it's, when, when someone's going through hard times, it feels like there should be something tangible we should do, and that prayer is actually an excuse for inaction. Well, I would argue, this is kind of expected because I'm a pastor, that prayer is actually doing something. That prayer is one of the good things we can offer someone when they're going through a hard time. It's something good that we can do for ourselves as we work through life's struggles. And today, I'm going to give you three different ways that prayer works. So, I assert for you prayer does work, and I'm giving you three different ways. It, it changes you, it changes your relationships, and it changes the world. So I'm going to work through those three ideas, and then I'm going to give you some tips about launching off a, a, on a prayer life of your own. Um, first, prayer changes you. Uh, an, art, an article in Psychology Today points to five scientifically proven benefits of regular prayer. So this isn't, um, this isn't mystical mojo. This is stuff that science can actually show. That uh, among these uh, scientifically proven benefits are an increased uh, level of impulse control, uh, an ability to control your anger, and reduced stress. 
So if you are dealing with any of those issues, you can just start praying anyway, no matter what you think about who's out there or whether or not they get answered. That's just a technique you can use to start reducing the stress in your life and taking control over the person you want to be. See, the practice of prayer is an intentional way of focusing on your internal world. Stopping all of the distractions, the outside noise that clutters our minds and our emotions. And gradually, we turn into the person that we want to be by taking that time to focus on who we are at our very core. Perhaps that's why Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Because eventually, if you pray for your enemies enough, at some point, you could become the kind of person who could love them, too. So, prayer changes us at the very core of who we are because we are actually adding mindfulness to our internal life instead of just reacting to the next stimulus along the way. Spending time to create the me I want to become. So, so prayer changes you. Prayer also changes your relationships. See, here's the thing. We've got a bunch of church people here. We got a bunch of not church people here too. Um, but as church folk, as people who believe that there is a God, and that that God is in control, there are certain things that we do to act that way, to act as if the God who we believe in is actually in control. And one of those ways we do that is to pray, to turn to this God who knows us and cares for us and ask for that God's intervention in our lives and in our world. And there's something incredibly powerful about praying with others. If you've experienced it, I don't even need to explain it because you know what I'm talking about. Many of you have called me in a time of distress or frustration or sadness. And uh, what I do, generally, as a rule, is if you're going through rough stuff, before you get a chance to hang up the phone and go deal with the situation, I'll say, can I pray with you on the phone right now? And most people are like, I've never prayed on the phone before. How does that work? I can't fold my hands because I have to hold one of my hands up here. Is this okay? And I'll be like, oh, it's totally fine if you hold the phone to your ear. I'm driving, so... <laughs> <laughs> but I'll stop, I'll say, let's stop everything and let's turn to God right now. And uh, you've felt that moment. I hear that moment. Um, I'd say four out of five times when I do that, um, people can't control the emotions. It just wells up and they overflow. To know that we together, wherever we're separated by geography, have come together and are turning to the one person who can really care for them in their hour of need. The one person who already has the answers well in hand to God. And if you want to change the atmosphere in your family or any other circle of relationships you're in, start praying together. That's why our community groups pray together. Julie mentioned them just a bit ago. Uh, every two weeks we're getting together with a group of other people from the church or from your neighborhood and uh, we talk about the sermon, we eat delicious snacks, and then we close by praying together. It's really hard to stay angry at someone who's praying for you. And so uh, if you've got tension anywhere in your life, share a prayer together and see where things lead. I think uh, if we spend more of our relationship time in prayer together, what kind of harmony could we accomplish in our communities, in our families, and ultimately in our world? Because what is our world except the network of all the relationships that everyone has? So if everyone was reaching out and praying for each other, then we wouldn't be enemies anymore. Just a thought. Someone can write a note to the Secretary of State and say, Pastor Collins got this great plan. <laughs> <laughs> End war everywhere. If we can just get people to pray for each other, just 
start that, would you? Thanks. Um, <laughs> so, prayer changes you. Prayer changes relationships. A prayer changes the world. See, like I said, if there's a God who knows us, who loves us, who understands our circumstances, and is able to respond, who's listening at all times, then it falls on us to reach out and ask for that help, to ask for God to respond. And right now, you're currently surrounded by people who believe in the power of prayer to change the world. Lots of these people have seen it for themselves. And the Bible is also full of these promises. Promises about how God hears us and responds. Uh, there's a, a much quoted verse about prayer from 2 Chronicles chapter 7. It says, if my people, so this is God speaking, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's a promise. That's a if then. God says, if you do this, then I will do that. There's a direct correlation between our willingness to humble ourselves and ask for God's help and God's riding to the rescue. Uh, and then uh, our verse from earlier today from 1 John 5, so kind of other end of the Bible. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So this assurance that God hears us, that God is listening, that God has compassion, and that God will act when we turn to God in prayer. So both of these passages show that God hears us. But there's something else buried inside of them that's actually a thread throughout all of Scripture, and that's this. The foundation of effective prayer is a relationship with God. Back in that, that 2 Chronicles 7, it says, if my people. So if you aren't God's people and you're asking, you're, you know, it's just like when you get a call on your phone and you don't recognize the number and so you don't answer it, <laughs> right? That's the thing. If you're not God's people and you're calling to God, God's like... I'll wait for voicemail. <laughs> now, there are absolutely remarkable circumstances where God comes through, even if you're in a place of doubt. I'm not going to hold that back from God. God can do whatever God wants to do. So, that's up to God. But I'm saying in terms of the principle, the way it works in the Bible, is you start off being God's, and then God comes to your aid. <coughs> or uh, in, in 1 John 5, it's, it's the, the instructions about how God hears you that's written to those who believe. So this first step of believing then leads into this relationship where God is hearing and you're speaking and God's speaking and you're hearing. And then prayer becomes effective. See, we can't turn to God in prayer only when we need something. Do you have that friend? That friend who their, their name appears on your phone and you don't answer because you know they're just going to ask you for something. If you don't have that friend, you are that friend. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, God wants to be more than your rich uncle. All right, God wants to be more than, than uh, sitting up on his throne with his money bags, throwing cash at you to pay off your student loans. That's not, that, God wants to be so much more than that to you. The Bible gives us analogies of what love of God is like. But they're only, they're only shadows. The Bible says love of God is like a husband and wife, that kind of close intimacy. The Bible says God's love is like a father and child, that kind of care and shepherding, that kind of nurturing, that kind of strength. It's like 
every relationship that's meant anything to you all rolled into one and then mag magnified by a million. That's what a relationship with God is like. God wants to be more than your rich uncle. God wants to have a relationship with you that goes much, much deeper than that. And it's at that point that prayer becomes world-shaking. That prayer becomes world-shaping. That the prayers that we offer have impact, not just in our own little circle, but across this globe. And so, uh, I think I speak for everyone when I say, I would like to have more change in me. I would like to have more change in my relationships. And I would like to have more change in the world, right? Right. So, let me talk you through three tips for you to get started on your own personal journey of prayer. And then, um, and then I'll commission you to do it, okay? So, three tips for prayer. First is pray daily. Now, when I first started learning about daily prayer, um, it was from a flavor of community where that meant it's gotta be a half hour or else it doesn't really count. <laughs> like, you need to just kind of cut your self open and lay it all before God, and that takes at least a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour if you're actually holy. So, <laughs> some of you are laughing harder because you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but if you're not in the habit of regular prayer, start with one minute. But set a date on your calendar. Set a date on your calendar on your phone, and then every day, at whatever a.m. or p.m. that you know you won't be doing anything else, have it bling at you, and then, oh, I guess I'll pray now. Even if you're driving, you'll hear it bling, and then you can do your prayer then. But start there. Start with something that's regular. Because if you do it every day, it becomes a habit. And then you'll miss it if you don't. And that's when you really start to feel the progress. Then you can say, you know what? I have too much to say for one minute now. I'm going to pray for two minutes. <laughs> yeah, watch out, heaven. Here I come. And then you have to start that journey with a single step. I saw it in a fortune cookie once. <laughs> and even if it's a minute or two minutes, God is so happy to have you in his very presence for even that one or two minutes. So find, uh, yeah, pray daily, set a time, and follow through. St uh, step number two, find a prayer buddy. All right? So this is someone who's in your regular, everyday life. A church friend is a great place to start. Um, probably not a spouse, because you see each other all the time, and so it'll get lost in the shuffle and you'll forget so a friend or some other, uh, some other acquaintance that you know who every time you see them, don't leave without saying, how can I pray for you? And then they'll say the same thing. <laughs> and then you'll know either in that moment and through the rest of your week until you see each other again, you'll be in prayer for that person. Because you're putting a face on prayer. It's, it's no, no longer this impersonal transaction with a God whose face you've never seen. It's prayer for the sake of a person you know and you care about. And you're not going to let them down. So, a uh, mental list right now, all of you. Who's someone who could be your prayer buddy? And have a conversation. Be intentional about that. Hey, my pastor told me that it would be great if I had someone in my life who I was a prayer buddy with, or you could come up with like a less cheesy name for it if you want to. <laughs> and, and can we just have an agreement that like every day we see each other, we'll just at least end our conversation with how can I pray for you? And then to actually pray for each other? And that's super, that's not an awkward conversation to have with someone who's actually close to you, whose, whose faith you've been able to perceive. And just think how that relationship will change and then how together your relationship with God will change. Cool, right? Yeah, you should do that, okay? Um, that's why I called it a tip. So uh, pray daily, <laughs> get a prayer buddy, and then third is a little thing called a breath prayer that I want to teach you. 
this is shorter than the one minute prayer that you said on your camera. <laughs> so okay. All right. Because this is when you're about to get stressed out, when someone just cuts you off in traffic, when the kids won't let you finish cooking dinner because they're constantly tugging on your pant leg, when that test is about to break you. It's called a breath prayer. And it only takes as long to pray as it takes to breathe in and breathe out. And you can do it verbally, or you can just do it internally. Generally, it's two phrases, two clauses, one on the inhale and one on the exhale. And there's actually a breath prayer that goes back centuries. They call it the Jesus prayer. And so on the inhale, you pray, Jesus, Son of God. And then on the exhale, you say, have mercy on me, a sinner. So we acknowledge God's greatness and invite God's intervention all in one moment. To just pause in the middle of whatever's going on and utter a short <coughs> prayer. One that I love to do is actually, so it's a, the second line of the first verse from my favorite hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. You can actually turn that line. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. <laughs> and just saying those words affirms something in my soul about who God is and who I long to be. Someone whose heart is in tune with the heart of God. So when I'm about to snap my kids and make sure they don't eat anything ever again for the rest of their life, <laughs> because they've asked for the 12th snack since dinner, <laughs> see my heart to sing my grace. Just a breath. Or make up your own. Whatever it is that's the longing of your heart. How about this? God, I love you. On the inhale, God, I need you. On the exhale, this is my relationship. God, will you respond? Something as simple as that. God, I love you. God, I need you. See, the, the reality is, most people have not experienced the benefits of prayer because they have not prayed. That's reality. Prayer will never work if you don't do it. Prayer works on us. Prayer works on our relationships and our communities. Prayer works not because um, God has, not because it has magic juju, okay? Not because we're doing an incantation and the world just works out that way. Um, it's not because we can bend God to our will and make God do things for us. Prayer works because God loves us. Prayer works because God longs to be in relationship with us. And God wants to affirm your steps of faith as you grow nearer and nearer to the one who loves you more deeply than any love you will ever know. And if you aren't sure about where this relationship stands between you and God, today might be the day that you move one step closer to that kind of closeness with God. With a prayer. With a prayer you can start something new in that relationship. And you know, whatever prayer you pray today, it might not change the world. But it can change your world. So I invite you, wherever you're stepping from today, Take that step closer to God with a prayer and then with an action. If God seems like this distant idea to you, then connect with people who have met him. That will make a difference. Our community groups that will meet next Sunday or Tuesday, great place to start. It's a group of people that will care for you. You can sign up on the Connections Board and we will call you and say, yes, yes, please join us. This is a moment uh, where you will see God at work. We're actually recording the prayers each week that we pray for each other in our community groups. 
And so at the end of May, when we're done meeting, we're going to take out the notes and say, look what God has done. Northern Light Church is a, a community of people who came together because folks were praying for Ramsey. Folks, folks were praying that God would start something new here. And now look what God has done. And wherever you are at right now, I encourage you, I urge you to look to God, to look to community with prayer. And weeks or months or years from now, you can look back on this day and say, look, look what God has done. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you so much that you hear us when we pray, that you long for the kind of closeness to us that can only come from one who knows us completely. So God, in this moment, we ask that you would help us to rip away every veil, every barrier that we put between ourselves and you. And we ask that you see us for who we are. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And help us to take one step today nearer to your love toward the life-changing relationship that you offer and to turn to you continually in regular daily prayer. Prayer with a friend. Breath prayer that just comes to life out of our very lungs. Change us so that we too can say, look what God has done. Amen.